Good evening and welcome to the Menominee Falls Public Library Board of Trustees monthly meeting. Today is Wednesday, June 19th, 2024. Uh, first, we're gonna do roll call and welcome. We have a new library board member, John Sober. Uh, so I will start and we'll go to my left here. So I'm Nicole Barger, I'm president. I've uh, been on the board, this is now a year. I can't believe it's been a year. Um, <laughs> I have four children um, who've lived in Menominee Falls for almost three years now. Um, welcome to the board. We're glad to have you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. I'm glad I could join. I'm Ann Lesla, Village Trustee, and I guess we're giving a little bio. So, 22 years in Menominee Falls, actually, almost 23 in Menominee Falls and three amazing young adult children. It's pretty much the excitement. <laughs> well, I'm John Soper, I just joined, and, but I've uh, been here about a little over two and a half years now in the falls. I have five children and uh, love coming to the library, so I'm glad I can be part of this. Wonderful, uh, I'm Tom Ewig. I've been on the board, I think, four months? Now something somewhere in there, and uh, I have two daughters, uh, eleven and six. They have a in here. We were discussing earlier that, uh, that tween graphic novel book club that is really quite popular here. So my older one does that. But but yeah, we've been here for it'll be three years in August as well. So you make sure you have the mics close enough to you. Okay, my name is Carol Gibbony, and I have lived in the falls for I think, well, let's just say 30 plus years, because I'm not exactly sure how long I've lived in the falls. I've been on the board, um, I'm beginning my sixth year. Um, I think my, my connection with the library is the historical portion of it, the Mod Shunk History Room. Um, I really enjoy the history of the falls and really get into all the um, stories about it, so that's pretty much my passion um, here on the falls, and I welcome you to our board. And I'm Ellen Rohr, and I'm the business manager here at the library. I've been working about here about 10 years. And I'm Jackie Rammer, library director. I'm just adjusting the microphone. Uh, I've been here for four wonderful years. We lost Matt. Matt, can you unmute? There he is. We can't hear you, Matt. Matt, hold on, we can't hear you. I think he can hear us either. Well, unfortunately, we did not get Matt's intro. All right. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the show, John. <laughs> so yeah, it's because you're in front of the speaker with that, so it might be an issue. So I'll turn, I'll turn.
And every time I turn it back on, it goes again. I did. Yeah, okay, sure. that might have done it because it wasn't giving that feedback before you went and turned up the mics. Ooh, the no, no, we were right on the speaker. Just make sure, um, since we have to have it turned down a little bit, make sure you really talk into those mics and have it right in front of you. And okay, I turned it back to what it was. I turned it back to what it was. So. Is it that one? This one too. So I don't know. Um.
next we have the committee report. So the policy review committee. Um, nothing new, but we will be going over um, two policies right? that we uh, had gone over in our last meeting. Um, so we'll be going over those. I'm not going to go too much into that. Otherwise, I think we're meeting next month. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then next would be the Special Events Outreach and Fundraising Committee. Um, and then I know you're on that one. Do you speak on anything? No, you guys have met, right? And I am kind of holding off on any new appointments until after we have the election. Um, so that way, you know, whoever is within the new roles can then we can kind of figure out who we want to be chair and all that with the committees, so. Uh, let's see, so new business. Uh, we have discussed and considered for approval of the Waukesha County Minimum to Exempt Standards Agreements. All right, so this is something that comes out from Bridges Library System each year, and these are the standards that I'm, so, that I'm always talking about, the Waukesha County Standards. So there are a few ways that our residents can be exempt from the county library tax. Currently we are, and that is because the municipal tax rate for library services is equal to or greater than the rate of the county library tax. And we currently meet or exceed the Waukesha County Library Standards um, for service. So this is a county-wide initiative um, and every few years, the standards are reviewed and a committee is made at the county level. Um, it's made up of citizens, uh, library directors, county board supervisors, and they determine what those standards are for library service in our community. So in order to be exempt from the county library tax, we have to agree to fund the library and dedicate a certain amount of money to things such as materials expenditures, so books, anything that's uh, circulatable. We have to be open a minimum hours per week. We have to have a minimum budgeted staff in full-time equivalent. Our collection size of physical materials has to be a certain amount. We have to have a certain amount of public computers with internet access and we have to provide wireless internet access. All of the minimums are determined by the municipal population. There's also uh, quality assurance standards, which are relatively new to the Waukesha County standards. So some of these quality assur assurance standards include that there's library board member orientation provided, that our website includes information with board and staff contacts and meeting information, that we budget for professional development, that the library board conducts performance evaluations, that we have an active strategic plan, and that we have um, a few certain policies. And we currently have all of that, those and do all of those things. So in the document that you have from Bridges Library System, you can see that we go off of the 2022 municipal population and it says, did you meet the minimum during 2023? And yes, we met at least the minimum for all of those in 2023. And then what we have to do is circle whether or not we will meet the minimum for each of these categories in 2024. Currently, we have budgeted accordingly and we will meet all of those minimums in 2024. So all I need is a motion to approve this document and then the board president's signature. Are there any questions? I had a question related to step one, and it says that we don't pass. So that, I'm just curious sure. if you explain that to me. So, if there are a few ways that we can, if we can not meet the quality assurance standards and still pass. And if we do meet the library service effort ratio, then we would be able to do that instead. Um, so the library service effort ratio, that takes into consideration how much, how many materials we lend to 
our residents here at Menominee Falls, how many materials we lend to other communities that have a library to their residents, so Sussex, Brookfield, all of those communities that have a library of their own. And then it also takes into consideration all of our Menominee Falls residents going to other libraries and using other libraries. Because of our location in Waukesha County, we have many Menominee Falls residents who, for various reasons, go to other libraries for service. For instance, many residents who reside in the Hamilton School District end up going to the Sussex Public Library because that's the library that, you know, goes and does a summer reading program at the schools and it's just more convenient for them. We also have a variety of residents that reside closer to the Brookfield Public Library, so from a convenience standpoint, it's just easier for them to go to Brookfield. So we have never um, met the library service effort ratio. Um, and we that's probably, that's my next question. probably never will. Um, so that's one of those things it's for the convenience of the patron to go to those places, so we don't need that, so therefore we have to meet these other standards. It's the issue of having a very large footprint for a building. Yes. <laughs> All right, so can I get a motion to approve the Waukesha County Minimum to Exempt Standards Agreements? Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to approve and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of passing the Waukesha County Minimum to Exempt Standards Agreement, say aye. Aye. Um, aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. Um, next, we have the nominations for the Library Board Office of President for the term of July 2024 through June 2025. I nominate Nicole Barber for president. Second. Anybody else want to nominate anyone else? So then in July, we'll take a formal vote, um, and additional nominations can be made on the floor then. Um, but it, this is really just our ability to see who's going to be who's interested and make sure somebody's interested. Um. Right. So we don't vote on anything right now. So we just move on. Right? Yep. Okay. We need to go. Yes, I accept. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, next we'll move on to nominations for the Library Board Office of Secretary and Treasurer for the term July 2024 through June 2025. Is there any nominations? I nominate Tom Ely. I'll second that. I accept. Thank you. Anyone else want to nominate anyone? All right. All right. Next, we have uh, discuss and consider for approval 2024 public computer purchases. All right, so I gave each of you a copy of my PowerPoint, which is outlining my proposal. Okay, so the background on purchasing the public computers. So. Um, just the historical background, we know that our usage of public computers has decreased by approximately 50% since 2019, and this is on par with other, with national trends uh, at public libraries, and honestly some global trends too. Um, we saw noticeable decreases before the pandemic and even more striking uh, decreases after the pandemic. So in regards to the 2024 budget, the library board approved appropriating funding for purchasing 26 replacement computers, um, and that's four less computers in the adult library that were being replaced. 
Then we decided that we would bring this back to the board before making any purchase decisions so that we could further discuss, we have more data, and um, we could adjust the amount that we're going to purchase if needed. For the standards, um, we need at least 20 public computers in order to be exempt uh, from the Waukesha County Library tax. So, looking at the data and the statistics, you can see um, our total computer usage by year. In 2017, it was a little over 17,000 uses, and that's for all of the public computers throughout the library. As you can see in 2023, we were down to 7,900 usage. We are projecting 8,445 uses. Again, this is just a projection. It's based on the average monthly use multiplied by 12, so it could certainly be less. I don't foresee it being more. Um, I do see that number continuing to be around 7,900, just like in 2022 and 2023. Jackie? Yes? What, does, what constitutes a usage? A login with a library card. So one Not a time issue, just nope. a login. Yep. Okay. So a session is what we call them. And do you, since I love the pandemic, just okay. what was the big drop off in 2020? The pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so obviously 2020, I would say 2020 and 2021, I would not consider those statistics really in this equation at all. That was different times. Um, we had, you know, less in service, we have mandated closures, so the state safer at home order. So I would not consider that really those statistics in this equation. I'd really look at start looking at 2022 and 2023 to see what what we're looking at now. So also something that happened during the pandemic is there were affordable internet programs provided by the federal government. Lots of people got their own devices and they, they started using them at home and they got internet at home and kind of got hooked on it and realized that it was very convenient. So that is another part of that equation. So yes, an enormous drop off from even 2019 for sure. If you look at the annual computer use by area in the library, um, we only started dividing it up by area recently for data purposes, but you can get a sense of where the computers are being used and what the projected numbers are for 2024. Um, obviously, the microfilm computer is going to get less use than the computers in the adult computer lab, but that's just a sense of how, how many logins are at each area. If you look at the computer session time, and the average computer session time. Um, in 2019, the average computer session was 66 minutes long. In 2024, the average computer session is 64 minutes long. So that part of computer usage has not changed very much. The people who continue to come are still on it for a relatively significant period of time. Um, and you can see by area how much time is being spent average in each part of the library as well. So with all of this data and with all of this information, what does this look like moving forward for our computers at the public library? We know that they're still valued, we know that they are still used, but they are used in a much lesser degree than they were previously. So there we have the adult library reimagining. This is the current layout of the computer area. You can see Latitude Cafe, the Team Space, and the Forge are all on the left. We have our print copy area directly in front of Latitude, and then we have our computer lab, and we have a catalog computer right over by the reference desk when you walk into the second floor. It works for our needs currently. However, as we began reimagining how many computers we may need and really thinking about it and oh, could we move the print copy station to somewhere more convenient? Um, the staff and I worked on some different ideas and we came up with something that we think is gonna be really, really cool. 
and it, this is our proposed layout. So we would have 15 computers for adults in the current area where they are now. We would add four over there so that there would be a total of 15 on the right phase of computers. We would move the print copy station over to where the catalog is, and that would be very helpful because sometimes people are just running up to print or they're printing from the study rooms, and it would be very convenient um, for staff as well because it's close to the reference desk, and we help a lot of people um, when they're ready to print. And then the, the area where the current computers are on the left, directly outside the future site of Latitude Cafe, would become cafe seating. And I call it cafe seating, but of course, anyone can sit there even if they don't buy a cup of coffee. But I'm kind of imagining a coffee shop vibe. We have a lot of soft seating throughout the second floor, moving some of that soft seating over. We would be able to do some book displays over there. And it would be a, spot, a space where if you say, hey, let's meet, let's meet up at the library for a coffee, you would be able to sit right outside the coffee shop and have a place to sit and talk. Um, we, we looked into moving the computer lab closer to the nonfiction area. Unfortunately, that would probably be many thousands of dollars for re-networking and running cabling through the floor. So we decided to table that until we do flooring in hopefully soon um, on the second floor where we would be able to have that all ripped up and be able to basically put the computers wherever we want. Um, but right now, I think that this would be a really cool section um, for people and I like the idea of everything from the elevator towards the team space, latitude, and the forge being a little bit more vibrant. You, you feel free to talk and have conversations. Um, oftentimes, people working at the computers are with someone else, or maybe they're on the phone. So it's not the end of the world that there is a, a little bit of noise level there. Um, but it would also allow everything from the reference desk back to the study rooms to be really that dedicated, kind of quiet, traditional library space so that people who are meeting up for a coffee at the library don't feel like they have to sit right outside the study rooms and potentially, you know, disrupt people who are, you know, studying for the MCAT or something. Um, so that would be my potential proposed layout. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Can you tell me one more time the numbers of the computers you're proposing for the layout there? Yep, so it would be 15 adult computers. And how many do we have now, Jackie? Well, here we are, right here. <laughs> we currently have 21 in the adult library, and we're proposing going down to 15. Um, the only other decrease would be in the children's library. We would go down to one. Um, and that is because we evaluated the usage and then also um, there's a lot of simultaneous usage of those computers. A lot of the times kids come in after school and they're doing homework or maybe even playing a computer game together. Um, and it also works with our new carols that we purchased to have four and not five. <laughs> so <laughs> that works out. Um, the adult library, um, we, that already built in the four that were voted on to to um, eliminate. eliminate with the replacement, thank you. Um, but then it, it adds a few additional. So we'll go down to 15 mm -hmm. rather than the 21. Yep. And that does not include, these numbers don't include our catalog. Correct. 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 Those are standalone. And yep. Separate. Now, as we were working out um, getting some budget numbers from the village, because um, they handle all the government contracts for Dell, um, we were planning to spend quite a bit of money, um, up like about 17000 for 23 new computers. And the IT manager for the village called me and said, hey, um, we have 15 brand new in the box PCs that were purchased for the village, but many people ended up going with the laptop route instead, and we would be willing to give them to you free of charge. So, 
So, so I was like, what? Um, that's a lot of money. Um, so if we were to go with that route, which they do work with Windows 11, they're newer than the ones that we have now, um, we approved 26200 in the replacement budget because we weren't sure if the prices were going to change, so we bumped it up a little bit. Um, if we went with the 15 brand new PCs from the village, all we would have to buy is eight new PCs for the other parts of the library, and then 23 monitors from Dell. And that would only cost $7,820, leaving us $18,000. 380 under budget. Jackie, where would you see the 15 brand new going? Are those automatically adult? Are you putting those in children? Where would the new ones go? Um, we could put them wherever you want. I'm yeah. Okay. yeah. Whichever ones Mix are match. whichever ones are the oldest would be replaced. All of them, them, all of them would be replaced. So we would take the 15, we wouldn't buy those, and then we would buy eight new because they only have 15, we would buy eight additional new ones and then add those to the to the 23. Okay. I do like your ideas for the layout. Um, I do think we could go down to the minimum though with the usage. It's just looking at the drastic drop in computer usage. It's awesome that we're saving all that money already, um, but I still do think we could go down to the minimum. Well, and that brings me, I, I want to jump back to your point, um, but that brings me to some additional research that we did. And we looked at a laptop lending kiosk. So um, this is popular with many libraries. I know we talked about this at a previous board meeting, like what about laptops? And we were so concerned with how much staff time it would take to, to wipe the laptops every time they were returned, to make sure that they're charged, and we were really concerned that that would be a really big deterrent. Um, but there is a company that makes laptop lending kiosks for public libraries, while the Tulsa Library has one. You put your library card in, and it spits out a laptop and a charger, um, and then you're welcome to use it anywhere within the library. So we priced out what one would cost for six laptops and six chargers. For the actual unit itself, it's about $40,000. That doesn't include the six laptops, which are about $5,800. Um, and then there is a, an annual maintenance agreement of four, about $4,000, but that includes a five-year replacement plan. So after five years, they'll send us a brand new laptop lending kiosk for free. I like this idea. I think that patrons would use it. I think that it's an interesting alternative. However, it's $40,000, <laughs> um, <laughs> which was a little shocking to me. Um, I'm definitely interested in investigating it further um, as we get more people in the library with the coffee shop, you know, as, as we continue to look at how patrons are using the library and if there, there is a need for those. I'm definitely interested in potentially um, looking back at this someday or even later this year once the coffee shop's open, once we uh, you know, go down however X amount of computers to see is there any interest in this? Would patrons use this? Because we definitely don't want to spend $40,000 and have nobody use them. Um, so I think more research needs to be done before we're able to come to you guys with Question on that idea. So do those six count towards the 20? Yes. So in order to go down to the minimum, looks like from your suggestion, we would need to cut three additional computers. It's minimum 20. Feel free to give your opinions. I'm just stating mine. I'm looking at the usage, the numbers. I did my own usage calculation earlier. I feel like with all the things we could do in the library, I'm just trying to be you know, sensible. 
can think outside the box here, I guess, not sensible. And I would support you on that, um, only because I spend some time in the library. Not all hours of the day am I in the library, but I do notice that there's very few, when I'm here, using the computers. And so um, even if we could eliminate maybe not to standard, but closer to standard, um, I would be interested in investigating that. We can always add computers, can we not? But um, it would be, I think, behoove us to experiment with having to keep yeah. I would probably look at decreasing the adult computers down to 12 if we did that, only because, I mean, I guess the biggest question in all this is how often are we seeing all the computers be filled up and people needing to wait in line to use a computer. Does that ever happen? Not anymore. No, no. I'm holding yeah. years past that it, you know, in 2017, oh. that was a regular occurrence. Oh, sure. We're not seeing that anymore. Um, I've been visually just kind of keeping track of when I notice that it's busy about how many people, like when I notice computer labs happen, about how many people are using the computers. I would say eight to ten. Um, they do enjoy spreading out. That's the only thing. Um, it, we may have to get a little creative with the arrangement of it to kind of give that feeling of being able, you know, if you're working on your taxes, you want a little bit of privacy or applying for a job, you kind of want to spread out and work on that. Um, but yes, going down to 12 in the adult would bring us to 20, the minimum to exempt. But we have to have 20. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, the only, the, the catch-22 on it, right, is what happens, people start, you know, coming to the library for coffee, and they go, oh, hey, look, I can use a computer as well, and then they sit and do whatever, and all of a sudden, you run back, and it'd be a great problem to have, but I think, at least for the time being, I don't think it makes sense to, to put them in, and then they don't get I just think so many people are using their phones or laptops now. Just saying, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, that was going to be my other question. Do we have numbers on the amount of people that frequently use the Wi-Fi in the building? Can you? Yep, the, yep. I have those each month in the um, in my director's report. I always oh. put Wi-Fi usage. Cool. Um, so. Year to date, we're looking at about 8,300 um, logins to the Wi-Fi. So, I mean, compared to in an entire year, people will use the computers, you know, 8,400 times. Mm -hmm. Year to date, halfway through the year, people are already logging into the network, whether it's with their phone, with their own laptops. To Amy's point, I think, you know, almost looking at it as get the minimal amount of computers and then maybe making sure that the Wi-Fi is boosted as good as possible. So mm -hmm. with, you know, hopefully more traction coming yeah. in with the coffee shop that we're not experiencing slowdowns for any of the patrons. Right. So I, you know, that just as a secondary point, that would be something that I would want to see as well as looking to make sure that the Wi-Fi doesn't start slowing down and the bandwidth start getting eaten up because more people are in mm -hmm. And whatnot. Just something to kind of keep keep an eye on as we as we go along. Because that's if people are coming to do work or, or do job applications or something. Yeah, like we typically even on really really busy days don't see a lot of lag with the Wi-Fi, yeah. which is great. So it's 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 able to you know go throughout the entire building. We did an extension project so that the entire parking lot is covered as well. So. Um, I feel really confident about the Wi-Fi for sure. And I think I, I totally see <coughs> looking at the statistics where you're coming from, definitely. I just, I, I, I think it's, I mean, I would rather purchase less now and then if I come to you and say, hey, we're really struggling, there's been a huge surge in computer use um, that maybe we could consider purchasing some additional ones to add on to, or if we see, with our patrons, 
that they're really interested in the laptop, that maybe we find some grant funding or something to get that started. A lot of libraries are foundation or they get some sort of speaking of laptops. What if we didn't want to do a kiosk, mm -hmm. what would be the odds of being able to just get laptops? So every single time that a patron would use it, as once it's returned, we have to run it through deep freeze, um, make sure that it's all cleared out and that it's ready to go for the next person. So there is a staff time component to it, which is why the kiosk is partially so appealing. Um, it's also very easy for patrons to just go up to the kiosk and be able to get the computer. It's very much self-service, which is the trend that we're seeing throughout the library, the self-checks. You know, people just being able to go into the study rooms and not have them reserved or unlocked. They really like the self-service. Um, so that's something that I definitely want to continue investigating and, and see. I realize a lot of people have their own device, but if you're here and you're working on a project and you're like, oh, I'd rather be sitting in this comfy chair than sitting at the public computer, maybe that is the, the trend of the future. Um, I definitely want to contact a few more libraries. I've talked to all of them, but I want to talk to a few more who have it, see what their experience is and what the usage is like. Could well, we maybe think about doing maybe a couple laptops to see how popular they are and, and then maybe visit the kiosk? Because I feel like that's a lot of money on the front. Yeah, it is. Put in and then, oh, well, they don't like it, they don't use it. So. Yeah. I would definitely, I, I would want to talk to my IT manager about that before saying, yes, of course, um, <laughs> just to make sure that the workflows would work for that. Um, but I definitely think that that's a great idea, kind of a pilot project for sure. Well, and while you're talking to those other libraries that, that have them, mm -hmm. maybe figure out how they got around. You know, maybe see if they know of a couple of grants that they were able to write. Mm -hmm. Then maybe we could, you know, investigate looking into to see if we qualify. Yeah. And you know, we can get, if we can get some grant money then to get behind it. And yeah. Then if it, you know, if it does show up that way, that would be amazing. It, it makes sense. Then yeah. we've got the data to back the decision making. Right. Yeah. That makes total sense. My, my question is so. We have these laptops that need to be completely white. Why don't we have to do that with the ones that are at, at the tables? So those are hooked up to um, Envisionware, which is our library system that we have on there. And every time the patron logs off, it automatically does that. Couldn't that be So it's possible. You're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's on the desktops, I can't imagine. Yeah. So the computers are wiping when somebody logs off, mm -hmm. like that would happen in that machine. Right. And that's um, just because it's hooked up to an actual wire. Would that not be something that's done through Wi-Fi? So when they log off, it's okay. the no, logistics of it was just interesting. We could talk about that. Yeah, all the computers are connected via wire to the network. On Wi-Fi, that may be difficult. I believe it has to be connected via wire I, to the I, network for I that particular say. software that we use. I'd be interested to find out, um, or at least have you know, have your IT manager look into. I mean, laptops can be hardlined into the network. That's not really an issue. But if we can get around it, and then all of a sudden you have laptops that you know they're on the Wi-Fi, and then all of that has to be done is connect them to the network and. That, it's like, that would be kind of interesting if that would work, or if they just would function as a laptop if they'd have to stay at that place, mm -hmm. if they'd have to be hard one. I guess then my, my point on this then is one, if I would encourage you to look at smaller devices, things that might be much more easily to be used for practicing an interview in the conference room, that's already a singular, some, you know, the iPad is the interesting choice, but I, I don't know about that. Anyway, that was just a suggestion. I would look at a smaller device package if they have that. But my number one, I guess what I would probably recommend right now is 
if you're looking at, at getting um, that sort of privacy feel without actually being private, um, I would encourage you also to maybe look at some interesting furniture mm -hmm. arrangements and different types of office furniture that might give a feel to that computer area to get that feel that you're trying to achieve there because I do like that concept. Yeah. Yeah, or and we might be able to get it cheaper with the furniture to lay out rather than yes. That yeah, way. and the only issue with that currently is we're very much tied to where the network is in the floor. Um, so we looked at different arrangements, but the way that the cables are connected to the floor, um, it, it, it's very difficult with our current furniture to be able to kind of do it creative right there. That's another thing where once we are in the new flooring stage of things. We could really start thinking about getting, you know, network jacks over here and over here and over here in a way that would make sense with new future furnishings for sure. As we save all the money that we are, apparently, with what our decision is going to be, it's a way that we can save for those things too to make those changes in the future. The thought kind of along those lines too is if you're looking at putting cafe seats in that area. I would highly suggest looking at, you know, like uh, essentially their, their power tables, right? They have USB ports and that kind of stuff. That's that a would, great idea. That would be, yeah. you know, if we're looking at saving quite a bit of money on the computers, that might be a good way to utilize those funds in a technology way, mm -hmm. but also, you know, to kind of give people a place. I mean, how many kids? walk around with their phones and they got their cord right yeah. there and they just want to plug in somewhere. Yes. Right? So that may be a nice a, great idea. a nice thing to kind of put in that spot, whether it's That's chairs smart. or tables. Yeah. That's so. super smart. I love that. I'm going to start looking into that. Thank you. And if people are coming to the library for a cup of coffee and we talk, I, I see where there's a, a problem there. So if they want to talk, a little more casually and not so quietly, where is an alternative place in the library that's set up that allows for a little bit more coffee shop style conversation? I don't know if there is that or not, but I'm thinking that would be something. So if you guys want to have a conversation, you here's where you can go and still be at the library with your mm -hmm. drink and have that. So I mean, right. I've seen the summer might be easier to put out. Certainly, and in the patio, of course, yeah. but in the middle of winter, we're a little bit, li we were a little bit limited. Right. But as I was looking at the building, I realized, okay, we have the team space now, we have the maker space. Both of those are very much, you know, non-traditional library. Everybody's talking, having a great time. So those spaces have already become louder spaces, and so it made sense to me to have that seating in that area. Um, because it's located in a in a space of not right next to the study rooms. It's not, you know, where people are necessarily. So when you have a group of people, where are you going to set on a place so are just unable to be quiet enough for that area? That's right. I mean, just be thinking about that. I mean, maybe that was in that area though. Having some yes. chairs that have moved this into is, the This is my this is my idea. Let's get together for a coffee at the library. Area. Well, and not to mention, I mean, for the computer area, in especially, you could get a good dozen of those noise canceling headphones mm -hmm. too. You know, for that specific area, I know, you know, a lot of testing centers have that, mm -hmm. where you just drown out the noise around you or what, what have you. But might be a good alternative if the noise for them is getting a little bit much because of the maker space in the teen area. I mean, it may not be the, co the cafe seating, but it might be a teen group that's meeting or, or whatever it is. So, it, you know, it could be any one of those things. It's off seating to be able to sit down and gather and yes. talk. And I do think, I know we've talked about this, really the way of the future are these rooms, the, the, what do you call them, the study rooms? Or the, mm -hmm. I know my son's been trying, he's like, Mom, if I'm not there at the very start, I cannot get away. Yeah. So, yeah. to me, you know, I've said this, I feel like that's what we really need to look at. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of the future. Yes. Yes, very much. The study rooms are in super high demand. We've been looking at 
obviously, of course, I want to build more. Is that realistic? I don't know. But they do have like the pop, the study room pops. We can certainly look into getting some of those if we can't build walls. <laughs> um, they have like those like divisions or whatever they yes. maybe put up. Like, yeah. Girls. Or, yeah, or, yeah, you know, they have like kind of like glass partitions mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, yeah. They have to be glass. But right, like, yeah. Something like that for sure, just because there is such a high demand for this type of room. Definitely. Yeah. And I don't know if there's something to do it. So the conference signings, you said that that's, they don't have to sign up for them? Or Not for the study rooms, no. I just saw it when we were at Platteville visiting my boys. There are conference rooms in the new. Um, the conference rooms were all tied to their cards, and they could go ahead and sign up and sign into that room mm -hmm. using that right there at the doorway. So they didn't have to come yeah, down to the that. central. Yeah. It would allow a little bit. So that's a, I guess that's super cool. Well. Yeah. Well. And the two group study rooms that we have, um, one of our goals is for one of them to turn it into a collaboration space that is reservable. So. If you need to take a test online, you can reserve it. If you need to meet with a group of people to work on a project, you can reserve it. Just so that we have some reservable spaces just for one person or for a small group of people and having some nice technology in that space as well, a screen, webcam, you know, making it look really snazzy and nice. And I'm trying to get, um, one of my goals is to get corporate sponsorship for that so that it's the whatever, whatever corporation collab or whatever we decide to call. I'm curiosity just from that conversation. Um, is there is there a struggle with the study rooms and people not being able to utilize them? In other words, people are you know essentially is it the same people going in and utilizing the room all day every day, essentially utilizing their office rent free? No, not that, necessarily. Not that I've seen. Um, certainly, we have a lot of frequent flyers, um, but I haven't seen that it's like one or two people jeopardizing that space and like, mm -hmm. operating a small business out of that little room or anything. I think it's just really busy, especially in the summertime. A lot of a lot of uh, college students are back home and they're taking summer classes, so in the summertime we see a huge jump in usage. Sure. Um, but there can be days where there are plenty of rooms available. It just depends, really. I'm just curious, I wanted to make sure that wasn't. Yeah, that's so, let me do my math really quick for what it would be for 20, if you need the exact amount for that motion. Well, did you want to, did we want to wait on this? this and maybe you could look into like those, um, elect, uh, the, uh, Power tables, that kind of thing, and we making can make a motion to have her look into it further. Yeah, and I, I think that's what I would suggest. That's that's the motion that I would I would just and I think there's a couple so of things. The tables are one thing, but we yeah. definitely need. I mean, we can get tables that that have those capabilities, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but I think I don't see us moving forward with the laptops right away. I think that would be something that we might work into but I think what what I meant was if you could be you know for the next meeting get us that exact number for the computers the 20 computers that we talked about and then also maybe look into and bring some suggestions for those tables and then maybe we vote on that in the next meeting and kind of give you a chance to do some research or is it a pressing issue that we vote well, on the computers now. Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you my big plan. I was really hoping to get this rearranged before the coffee shop opens so that I know exactly how many computers to remove and then rearrange the furniture um, before the coffee shop opens and that kind of is dependent on how many computers we're going to purchase. Um, gotcha. I am totally fine. I respect that. I, I actually would like you to consider maybe just getting even one laptop to try. Oh, okay. I'm walking to your sure. I was thinking like three, like do 20 computers and then we can do the other three laptops if that's what we want. Or if we're going down to 20, do 17 computers and then we could do 24. Okay. Yeah, I really think it's enough. 
Because I think a three would be a traditional starting number to try or, with at least. Or would two be an easier number to work with? Do you, you do I two Let's from the adult one. section and then you got ten computers? I'm just thinking round numbers here. <laughs> My only curiosity is, so he explained the damage of his wife. Does the IT person live with this? You would need to ask James, I wouldn't you, about the other I don't know if we're really prepared to make a decision Not about the iPad. I have a laptop, but I mean, I see what we can make a decision on the current plug-in one. I would hate to go down to less than 12 adult computers. I think you, you have two full phase of six and that is 12. I would hate to cut down on any more of those and the only reason is we have many many people who use our computers the public computers who are not necessarily comfortable or would never be comfortable using laptops. The laptops I was foreseeing as appealing to a different crowd not necessarily the crowd that uses the public computers but ones that are interested in using the study rooms or grabbing a table um, who do have that experience and familiarity with laptop usage we do have quite a bit of regular computer users who this is the only time they've ever used a computer we need to teach them how to use a mouse how to type, how to use a keyboard, very basic computer skills. And so I would hate to take any more of that from that group, from any more of those computers from that group of people and be like, hey, sorry, but we have a laptop. And then them not having any clue how to operate that. I totally agree with you. That's no, I, I agree with that too. I, I think we need still the desktop computers. I'm just thinking maybe we could start trying and oh, start yeah. the laptop. I, I can definitely talk to our IT staff and bring an idea, get some more information, do some more research on what that would entail, and bring back a proposal next month regarding laptops for, for in-house patron usage. Um, Why don't we, I mean, my, my thought is just kind of, if you need to know how many, how many computers we're getting, I think then, you know, in order to make sure that she's able to set it up before latitude opens. Are we, I guess, are we foreseeing them opening before our next meeting? No. That's... No, but it, it will take a while because we are not able to disconnect the cabling and the floor ourselves. We have to hire an electrician and work with a networking company. Gotcha. So there's more than that. Yeah, it's not, we can't, it's, it's not, not just moving it fast, no. Okay. No, um, so. So you could see the, t the 12 computers, mm -hmm. if we follow her suggestion, it is down at the minimum of 20. Mm -hmm. And then you come with a proposal related to what it would be like, the logistics and all of having these piloted laptops that could be available for the different clients. Yes. And we're still going to go above 20, and I just, it's just not the usage. But we'll still take advantage of it. We may still go above 20, but it's, it's, a diff, it's a different service that we would be able to offer the patrons. Maybe, maybe we just table the laptops for now, and we get, we get what we need right now, which is the 20 computers, and maybe we talk about the laptops this fall. Or, or over the winter to try and start maybe as a 2025 initiative that might be the hey this is our you know piloting of the laptop and that'll give that'll give you guys time to really do some good research talk yeah. to some other libraries yeah. and really get some good information that way you know you're not we're not just throwing things at the wall trying things and spending money here and there it's it'll be a well researched and you'll have plenty of time to kind of get that to and, get that and maybe um, we'll determine that the laptops won't be beneficial exactly. and, and we'll, we're fine with the 20 that we have with yeah. the PCs and we just need more tables with plugs and things like that maybe that will be the determination I think more and more people have their own device 
and we're gonna see that trying to increase. I mean, if you look at the, the PC usage, that in and of itself is telling us something. And I think that's gonna be mm -hmm. Kids are getting into schools. Right, right, exactly. So I am, so in order to get, so with the 15 from the village, we would need five new PCs and 20 monitors, and that would cost $5,450. Is way under budget for what we so, do. Yes. I'd like to put forth the motion then for um, for the five new computers and the 20 monitors and then kind of get that this all rolling. So. Second. All right, I have a motion to approve. I have a motion to second. Any more discussion on this? The only question that I would have is those ones coming from the, the ones coming from the village. I mm -hmm. just, how new or old or do we know and um, i'm not saying they would do anything like right, getting right. old. i'm just are they are they, they like brand new new new? yeah but are they brand new but they were purchased three years they were ago? They, they were purchased a few years ago is what i'm told but they okay. still are capable of operating windows 11. my big concern with that maybe and maybe this is going to take a little bit more time again my big concern that is how quickly computers are evolving, mm -hmm. and how quickly are these even just being a couple years old? Mm -hmm. How quickly are they going to go out of date and we're right back to square one talking? Mm -hmm. Or is it better we that we replace them every five years? We do replace them every yeah. five years. Anyway. Okay, that's, that point is good. And they're free. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And they're that's free. That's exactly. a happy call to get. That was a very happy call to get. Free, free stuff. I'm know? not. I'm not saying it's not good, it's just one of those. Oh, right. Even though it's free, is it that? Big? Right, you have to take that into consideration for sure. Definitely. Um, we had our IP manager look at the specs and he was. Oh, oh, that, okay. I yeah, didn't even that. realize that was going to be my question is did he take a look at them? Mm -hmm. then, then I have no issue. So then I think we're good. All right. All those in favor of approving five PCs and 20 monitors. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. Jackie and Ellen, is there any ramifications of adding twenty thousand dollars of unspent money? We'll spend. Or are we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. It'll be in other areas. Put it into other areas and even use it next year. Yes. So any money that's left over at the end of the year enters our fund balances, and those we can take There's from no as the there's no state penalty. No. Nope. Okay. All right. Next, we have discuss and consider for approval policy review committee's recommended updates to 2.05 privacy policy. Children's records. We wanted some clarification there about access to children's records. 
So we included information about how if you are a parent or custodial guardian um, and your child is under the age of 16, you are able to access your child's records. If you are six, if the child is 16 or older, parents are not able to access their child's records. They are only a, they they cannot see what their child has checked out. So we wanted to clarify that. That's a state statute. Um, of course, parents and custodial guardians are financially responsible for their children until they turn 18. So occasionally we get some questions about that. Um, for instance, if a child who's 17 checks out a book and never returns it, the materials recovery service will send them a bill and they'll say there is one book that cost $15 and your child didn't return it. Can we tell them what the title of that book was? No. According to the state statute, no. So we wanted to provide clarification on that. The only other update that we included was talking about our use of radio frequency identification and that we use RFID tags in our materials and that the only information stored on that RFID tag is the items barcode and then a security chip. Um, we do not use it in library cards and we do not have any tracking capabilities of it anywhere. Just in case there was any question about that, um, if people were worried about RFID, um, this is something that some other libraries have added to their privacy policy. Just something to point to in case there's any question about how we're using RFID. Could it be? Is that the problem? It could be used that way? Um, in other, in our case, could not be used that way, but in other spheres, potentially. Well, it's like your phone has RFID in, so you can find your phone. Yeah, but we don't do that with books. No. <laughs> There's no map of where every single book that's been checked out is. And that was really the changes other than just formatting. Jackie, I don't mean to be difficult. I'm really a visual person, and I feel like the privacy policy is rather important, especially in this day and age where children, adults, access I will print, I will print some. Um, or, could we we do an or could we table it till next month? Do we need to do it today? It doesn't need to be done. I can table it until you guys have some reality. Yeah. I don't have the other one either. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Thank you. Sorry. To the meeting space policy you wanted me to run through yet today? Or no. Okay. Yeah. My apologies for not having any packet. It's okay. I guess the the before you do that, are we just going to have the same? Objection does that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe we can yeah. just table that one as well. And That's say that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't. I thought she was going to go there. No. Okay. Do we need? We should probably do table this first one, right? First. Yeah. 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 All right. So I need a motion to table uh, privacy I'm, policy 2.5 until the next meeting. I move to table the approval of uh, policy review. 2.05 of policy, or privacy policy to our next meeting. Second. All those in favor of tabling the privacy policy until next meeting, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. I also move to table the discussion and consideration of the policy reviews committee. Uh, recommendation for 3.06 meeting space and policy to our next meeting. Second. All those in favor of tabling policy 3.06 till the next meeting say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Did, let's just, let, I'll let um, Jackie go over it real quick so that way we can just briefly go on the next meeting. 
Okay. Let's just wait. Yeah, let's wait. Okay. We'll just wait then. All right, so then we're done. <laughs> Next is the uh, trustee education chapter one, the trustee job description. All right, so this chapter basically outlines everything that you guys have to do as a uh, library board trustees. So it goes through a lot of your principal activities, obviously regularly attending board meetings, working with um, the village board to obtain adequate library funding, and making sure that you take part in developing the annual budget, and then of course approving the monthly expenditures. Looking at library policies and uh, reviewing those on a regular systematic schedule, so we have a year review schedule developed so every three years at the minimum we review each policy to make sure they're current up to date and reflecting the actual um, needs of the library help determine and advocate for reasonable staff salaries and benefits that is all part of the budgeting process hiring supervising and evaluating the library director studying the needs and interests of the community and see that they're addressed as appropriate by the library, acting as an advocate for the library through contacts with civic groups and public officials, becoming familiar with the principles and issues relating to intellectual freedom and equitable provision of public library services, assisting in the formulation and adoption of a long-range plan for the library, and periodically reviewing and revising the long-range plan. So that is our strategic plan, which is um, up in 2027. So we still have a few for that, and then also um, attending state con state library conferences, other workshops and training opportunities as they arise. Any questions about that chapter? Yes. So number two, it says uh, the piece of F, which ensure that there is adequate financial support for the library to provide a meaningful program of services. Where are those programs of services at? So those would be reflected in our strategic plan. Okay. And as a trustee, it's our focus to be focused on those services. That's why I wanted to know mm -hmm. what are those programs of services and what's required to provide them. And so those are all outlined in our strategic plan. Yes, so that is reflecting on what services we hope to expand upon or provide within the upcoming years and how we're going to get there. So whenever we review the budget, we always look at what are the strategic planning goals and what can we bring in in order to support those goals, whether it's financially or otherwise. So when we review the budget, will we get sort of a layout from that as to what our essential programs and programs or services are? Yes, so last year's budget, for example, we, um, the staff kind of picked out some of the top goals in the strategic plan that we were hoping to focus on in that budget year. And therefore, that was reflected in how the budget was appropriated that year. Well, and then we questioning on this, because like a long range plan to me is usually an initiative that you're trying to develop and grow. Mm -hmm. Whereas these are really talking about the essential services that we're trying to provide as a library to Mm -hmm. So they aren't necessarily always going to line up. So I was just curious if there was a way for us to have sort of an overview of what the only time we back to yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. It would be helpful to know where I could go to get that. Certainly. And in our case, I do feel like our strategic plan certainly has those long-range initiatives, but they are all tied into our core services. So programming. Um, technology and patron focus as well. well. So we do have those tied in pretty organically in the district. And the notes can be brought up later because I have this time to see it Yeah. And it does say looking at the budget, so I mm -hmm. think that's something that we'll talk about later as well. Uh, the other one with the long range plan. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess I'll, I'll go on to see that. Oh, certainly. It's in the orientation document that I gave you, and I do have a paper copy if you'd like one right here. Okay. And I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'll, 
I'll get it from you. Do you want the cup? Okay. Yeah, I'll get it from you. Okay. And yeah, like for some reason, I don't know why I just couldn't put the things on there. Okay. And then uh, I would like to know when, at some point how what our regular review of that is and how we track progress throughout the year, how we're doing that, if we do KPIs. You just missed it last meeting. Yeah, I know. I saw it. <laughs> Actually, I saw it. as yeah. part of my review, uh, all those are touched on. And a few of these other ones we can talk about later. Oh, number 10, I was curious. So is that something that's budgeted to send board members to, or is that something that board members just sort of go and, and, and throw in the, the registration fees for the conference? We haven't had board members attend in recent years. Certainly, if it's something where there's interest, we can certainly look at including that in the budget, of course. Volunteering in. Two weddings to get to this year, so we'll see. <laughs> All right, any more questions for Jackie? Alright, so next is the library board president's report. Um, I don't really have much this month, but I'm going to welcome John to the library board. Um, that's about it for that. So. Next is the village board of trustees representative's report. And then did the director report? Oh, did we skip me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> Just me, again. <laughs> yeah. uh, so looking at statistics, we're doing really, really well. Um, and I think things are going very well. It's the first few weeks of the summer library program. If you've been in the building, if you've seen it hopping, we've had so many, so many um, kids and families coming to our programs and events. It's been wonderful. We had our first big Monday program uh, with James the Magician this week, and we had a full room. Um, we had to bring him inside because of the heat. Uh, so this room was very full of enthusiastic kids and their parents. Uh, things are going great uh, with the summer reading program. The staff are keeping up with all the checkouts and all of the helping me find books and, and signing people up for the summer library program. Something special that we do is we enlist the help of teen volunteers to work uh, alongside the children's desk. So if you are part of the children's or teen summer library program, you come to that special volunteer-led table and you're able to redeem your prizes with them. So this is a great opportunity for them to get some uh, quote unquote work experience and also it's a huge help to the staff as well. So that's really great. Looking at some of our statistics, um, January through May we had just over 1,000 card registrations. I'm expecting that number for new library cards to uh, just really escalate this summer. We've already seen so many people registering themselves and their children for library cards. Our visitor count is looking great and we've just been so so busy and the staff have done an amazing job keeping it up, up with it all so definitely um, I've said this before the summer library program is it's our Super Bowl it is our Super Bowl this is our time to shine so um, it's it's a it's an exciting place um, I touched on the Staff Education Day, which is old news by now, um, but I included the picture of the trustees who were able to be present serving the staff um, breakfast. They are still talking about that. They loved it very much. And just a little bit about the merch store. I gave a Latitude Cafe update, which is since, as you are aware, um, out of date, the plumbing permit has been issued, and I have been working to clarify that with the public. Um, and then building updates, I wanted to talk and share with you just some of my plans for what we're working on moving forward because I'm kind of on a roll now with these building updates. <laughs> and I, I just Can I have you go back real quick to the merch store? Yes. Is that launched? 
And I kind of briefly said in the last meeting, do we know, like, would we be able to supply the staff with some sort of like a gift card to the merch store or something like that um, at some point? I think it'd just be nice for them to have something logo to the library that they can wear at work or something like that. Is that something that we... So we, we can't do gift cards because they're taxable income, but sure. we could do like a bulk purchase, certainly. Yeah. Maybe like having a, a Friday staff day or something and everyone would wear their shirt. Yeah, like I know, you know, you could wear jeans in your shirt or everybody wears it on this day of the week or whatever it is, that, you know, whether it's camaraderie or it promotes the merchandise for the library and it, you know, it just kind of gives that little bit extra, you know, that little bit extra feeling, not to mention promotes that merchandise. Thing. Yeah, I think they would appreciate that very much. That's something that we haven't budgeted for, but it would be something that I know they would certainly appreciate having, um, especially wearing it to work, for sure. I was gonna say, I think there there was a couple extra dollars that we might have helped to save with those, uh, with those computers, so we might be able to figure out a way to, again, better utilize those funds mm -hmm. to show the staff appreciation and, and really just, you know, kind of give back to them think, as well, especially this time of year. They're very busy and very hard working. So maybe something nice, whether we do it now or you know, at the end of the summer or what have you, I think it'd just be, yeah, I think it would just be real nice. That's very considerate. I know they would love it, for sure. I think that's a great idea. Would you be able to, for the next meeting, would you be able to get us a price Absolutely. for the entire staff? And yep. then just because I'm curious, could you get could you include any of the um, team volunteers or any of the volunteers that come and help with the books and stuff? Yeah. Because I mean, if they're consistent people, or I don't know if that's something that like you have a consistent rotation, that might be a nice thing. The, the right volunteers. Yeah, yeah to those yeah, folks as well. Are. I'll come back with pricing next meeting. Just, I'd be curious because, again, just a, a thank you for the volunteers too. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, if we got the money, we could do it, so. Do you currently have anything where you really provide a thank you to volunteers? We have a uh, thank you appreciation breakfast plan in August of this year. Um, I was just curious, are there events or things that are happening in the community where the library and your team would be a part of that would be good for the board to be strong by and being a part of? Yes, so we were just at Memorial Fest not too long ago. Uh, the library booth saw almost 900 people and talked to almost 900 people about the services we offer. And that was one thing where we sent out a sign up the board in case you are available. That's a busy weekend for people. Um, but in the future, when we have booths like that, I plan on making sure that you are all invited in case you feel like stopping by the booth and, and spending a couple minutes. It doesn't have to be a whole shift or anything, but just being that, that would public. Yeah, be nice to get something like that. Because I mean, I was looking at the, at the count and there's like three a day coming from the library, different notices and newsletters. Mm -hmm. I could, I would miss, and I would miss it if you didn't like just invite us. Hey, here's some big ones if you could make that'd be great. Sure, that'd be very helpful. So I don't, I don't get lost. In that. Yeah, absolutely. I don't 
have a clue what it will, what it would cost, but I'm just in the exploratory um, stage of that. And then I'm planning um, for the future, looking at the space needs for the second floor. As you're aware, it's kind of a, an ever-changing environment up there. So I'm working on developing a plan for when we do need new flooring and furnishings and wall coverings on the second floor, what that would look like, because that is going to be quite an extensive project given the shelving up upstairs, giving all of our network hookups upstairs, um, and just everything that that would entail in terms of moving the shelves, hiring you know specialty movers for those. Um, so I'm trying to plan ahead for that. And my goal is once we get these new spaces done, so we have the clean space, the maker space, the local history room, those are our newest spaces, um, and now children's, really developing a preventive maintenance plan for the interior of this building and making sure that we're looking at getting the carpets cleaned on a regular basis as much as the budget would allow, taking care of the things that we have because we're going to be able to keep these items nice for so much longer if we have a schedule. So that's my dream goal um, moving forward is to, to develop that because currently we don't really have I would love to see that as well, just so we don't end up kind of like, you know, with the orange barrels outside all the time. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all I think we have. Uh -huh. Any more questions for Jackie? Just one on, <coughs> one on building and grounds. Mm -hmm. um, that awning right there. Tends to be a lake after the rainstorm yes. there. Yes. Is there any drainage or design to alleviate that? It's it? it's flat. Because it, it will freeze and make an ice cream yes. there in the winter and and stuff. Is it, that not been discussed how to get that drained or is that okay to get that there? I think we've always been told it's just okay. Um, but that's definitely something that comes up every winter and spring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I can definitely. Is that um, something that we have to deal with, or is that something that we would be coordinating with the village? So that's what. So I would call public works and buildings and grounds, and then they would kind of evaluate that and see if there's anything that we need different with that. So is that something that we would say and? That be something you can bring up the village is something that could they please look into that so that I don't know what the safety problem is or anything, it just seemed like, well, like now, there's lots of mosquitoes and things. I don't know if that's. We can, and like Jackie talks to them also. Um, we do have a new public works director who's just getting started, brand new. And, and, and there's tons of things. Yes. I don't mean to say that that needs to be a priority. I'm just curious if we had trouble. I was going to give them like a week or two <laughs> before I <laughs> pop in with my list. But yeah, I can definitely, I can definitely talk about it. Yeah. I was up on the second floor. Yeah. yeah. approved an issuance of a taxable tax increment project um, for Campbell Partners. So that's a TID district, if you guys are familiar with that. I typically don't like to get into many of these things because a lot of them are very hard to explain. So we did talk at length about our public comment, not our public hearing, which is very different. Public comment is at the beginning. We ended up holding it in committee after lengthy discussion, we've talked about moving it after the consent agenda. And um, anybody that wished to speak would fill out the form ahead of time, like a, a lot of meetings do. And then that would be given to the village president. We are, there was discussion about it just being you know, Falls residents, taxpayers, business owners. We decided not to go that route that anyone would be allowed to speak. And we also approved a lease agreement with U.S. Cellular for its monocle. It's so 
sometimes. <laughs> um, we also approved the ground lease agreement with AT&T. Those were pretty much the exciting things. I did want to touch quickly since you talked about the coffee shop. Has the um, plumber started yet? No. Do you know why? No. All we were told was midweek, and it's midweek now. Um, so I was going to call our uh, building staff tomorrow to see if he had an update. Okay. If you could, please. Yes. I oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it's midweek. All right. Yeah. 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 I, I did email um, Tom Hoffman, but I know he's now, I'm sure, very happy to be stepping down from being the interim right. for public works. I will, I'll check into that tomorrow and then send you all an update as I have it. But I was hoping to be here like Monday. Okay. I, I do real quickly, I, I saw some false information going around on Facebook. So I thought this would be a really good time just to review two topics that I saw that were false out there. Um, and I'm just going to read super quick. So the operator, which is Latitude, agrees to operate a professional coffee shop on the second floor of the library. Uh, the operator shall furnish all services and labor necessary. I'm not including but not limited to materials, equipment, and all supplies. In its performance under the terms of this agreement, this agreement shall commence on the date of the last signature of this agreement. The operator Latitudes shall commence operations of the coffee shop no later than 90 days following the village completing the work required. So we are waiting for the village to complete the plumbing part. Mm -hmm. Period. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think there's nothing that. So the 90 days for latitude has not started yet. Correct. They and, would love to be done. Correct. Yes. I think they Rich. would have. They, their <laughs> way about this would have been done already. And, yes. They are ready. It was right. estimated that it would take about a month for the village to get the plumbing and electrical work. Yeah. It's yeah. been how many months? <laughs> Three and a half. This is all waiting on permit. Yeah. Items. And now we have the permit, so hopefully it goes speedy. That's that's what I'm hopeful for. Me so, too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I got. Mark. Uh, next would be the school district report that David's on here. So next is the Menominee Falls Library of Friends and Easement. So big excitement. June 21st um, is going to be the tree planting in Municipal Park. Um, the friends are very excited about this. We're praying for good weather. Um, there is a July 19th rain date in the event that we have to do that. I know I've shared with you all about this several, several over the several months, so I think you're all familiar with Johnson Nursery is going to be coming, giving a program. This is a family-oriented oriented event. Um, should be very exciting and will also make municipal park all the more beautiful, so that's very exciting. Um, we addressed the apparel store. Um, we've raised $100 so far in the apparel store. It's doing very, or, We've made over $100 so far. Is that our profit, Jackie, or is that yes, what we that's the profit. That's our profit? Yes. Okay. So I'm um, doing very, very well, as Jackie said. Um, we have two little libraries. One of them um, is by the food pantry. The other one is in the, um, what do they call that area? Centennial Plaza. Which is going to be remodeled. So we'll be moving that little um, free library as soon as they have those plans put into place. Um, that the library will find its new little home um, sometime soon. Um, Memorial Fest friends were also present there. They raised $25 and saw many, many people as well, so it was a great event for the friends to be present. Um, they're excited about a friends only event, August 27th. It's going to be um, Indian food with Alam, uh, Alam, Alamelu. Alamelu, thank you. Um, the friends have raised $300 from two different places for food and supplies, so they're very pleased about that and looking forward to that event. Also looking forward to Kid Fest at um, Village Park on August 10th, and I will have more information about that as I get it. So those are our highlights. Thank you, Carol. Uh, next 
meeting is Wednesday, July 17th, 2024 at 6 o'clock right here. Um, we are adjourned.